and realize that people project on you their own perception of how they see you and what is right and good for you. So that was a question for you, Sandra. Do you want me to repeat that? That's just an ongoing part of being a line five. Mm -hmm. Any any type, I imagine, any, mm -hmm. any profile, any level of definition, the line five is going to have that experience. And um, my relationship with that has really um, changed a lot in the past couple of years. Instead of being disempowered by it, um, I just manage it and I now see, see the projection field as a superpower. Thank you. Yeah. Um, question for you with regards to bonds made and broken, talking a little bit about that. So my two cents about that is I, I have had those experiences where I'm sort of all in on something. I can't get enough of it. And then I'm like, eh, I'm done. Right. Like that's the experiment moved on next thing. Kind of think that's also part of the manifesting generator um, who loves spinning multiple plates in the air and leaving plates behind and adding new plates, you know, moving ahead. Um, but I would love to hear about that experience um, um, from you. Julianne, I'll start with you. Um, I was reflecting on this just the other day, actually. Um, my partner, he's a manifesting generator and he he does he does this. And I'm like, he and he sometimes says to me, he's like, you kind of do the same thing as me, except you're like you've always got all of this stuff on the go. And I and I really do. And I and I was thinking, I wonder if it's like this, it's part of also my spleen that's just acting in the moment. I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to do this. So I'm just like constantly going oh yeah I'm doing this I'm doing this or nope and um so and what I like what I said before is that sometimes it can be get really exhausting for me and I need I've been being that inner parent for myself and and being a little bit more like you need to relax and lie down at nine o'clock at night and do nothing like it's super important otherwise I'll just keep keep going um, so yeah, I have plates in the air, maybe not as many plates as an MG though. I don't think as many. Mm -hmm. Sandra? I jump all the way into something and then I either master it. Like, you know, that was my experience of human design, getting totally bonded to it and then staying bonded to it. And then like we've talked about in, in several different questions, having learned lots of different things and I learn them because I get excited about them enough to the point where I become like a practitioner of something and then whoop, become unbonded, not where I'm going and sometimes don't ever do it again. So that's certainly an experience of bonding, unbonding, bonding, unbonding. Um, when it comes to people, um, yes, I've had, you know, a divorce and all that stuff. My experience with relationships is that I tend to hold on too tightly sometimes and not willing to let a relationship go. And I have had a couple of people just like who are really close to me, um, like flat out cut me off end relationships with no communication. And that has been so traumatic to me. So it's like learning that is like, oh, you know, there's a there's an unhappening. It's, it's been time, um, but that is difficult for me. And looking at part of where that comes from. So I have an undefined emotional solar plexus, feeling pressure to keep people happy. And then this whole throat to G will center taking things personally. It's really hard for me when I feel rejected. And so when somebody cuts me off, it, it like just lands on me. And I, you know, sometimes I obsess about it for years. It takes me to recover and, and heal and then stop feeling actively wounded by that. 
And I take that as coming from, from, from the throat to the G and will. And um, looking at the extent to which I will do things to keep from being rejected. So looking at this bonding, unbonding, these piece from a perspective of relationships, noticing the dynamic of where I go with all of that. Juliana, did you want to add something? Yeah, that bonding and unbonding, right? It's it's that um, I really feel that with learning things and doing and experimenting with things and with people as well, with the emotion, open emotional solar plexus, and then uh, open G and a projector who sees all of the potential to see to the core, and I like and I stay into too long not as much anymore but I have stayed in too long and then it's like the other person goes cut we're done and I'm and it's like rocked me because I'm still living in that potentiality even though there's my spleen's been saying no multiple times my spleen sometimes says it multiple times and I still don't listen um but it's like like I so feel that too it's like learning to recognize when the bond isn't there anymore and then going okay I can actually let go because that's I'm allowed to do that I'm allowed to do that I'm allowed to go okay this isn't working as opposed to staying in and then having like the rug pulled out from underneath me Mm -hmm. Yeah, I find as a line three, doing the cutting is easy, <laughs> doing the breaking the bonds is easy, but having the bonds broken, right? It's like, wait a second, wait, wait. I don't know if I'm ready to have the bonds broken, right? Yeah, it's very, very different experience when it gets flipped. So um, I'm just going to take a quick, we're, we're going to be wrapping up in a moment. Uh, let me see. Uh, Hang on, I have one more piece about that. Please. Yes, so right um, looking at the projection field and the line five profile, how important communication is. So the line five profile um, leads to all kinds of misunderstandings and misinterpretations and people getting offended and, you know, just like things not being fully communicated, leading to all of this mess in the relationships. And I am obsessive about like initiating the conversation if necessary to get things clear so that, you know, it cleans the relationship. And so I don't continue to obsess about it because if it doesn't reach that point of clarity, I will go over and over and over. And now that I have these tools to help me understand how, what to do when these relationships get ruptured like that, it's much easier. Yes. yes. Yeah. Filling in blanks, <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's you're right. Because if you can have that communication, then you, somebody else is actually filling in the blanks with the real information as opposed to, you know, stuff that gets created. Uh, Juliana. I, that's what I did when I entered in this relationship with my, with my partner now is I was really clear on like he invited me in and then I've been really clear knowing that I have the, that three, five, right. Of letting him know who I am, like, and taught and being really clear in my communication. And that has changed just everything. And I can say to him, I'm like, you are projecting on me right now because I have, you, you are perceiving that I have let you down. I am a human and I will make mistakes. And he goes, Oh yeah, you're right. I'm like, thank you. And it's just, it makes it so easy, so much easier to be just upfront about it in, um, correctly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I mean, some people will perceive that actions were done to somebody and it's like, no, it wasn't personal. It's just actions. Right. And yes, communication is, is definitely huge. 